Business Life Today. My name is Daryl Carr. Thanks for being with us tonight. We begin with China-Ghana economic ties. And Chinese ambassador to Ghana, Her Excellency San Buan Hong, has allayed fears the government of China would use its economic power to exploit natural resources of Ghana in its recent dealings. According to her, China is committed to having a win-win agreement with all African countries, including Ghana. Madame Sun Buan Hong made the remark when addressing participants at the two-day China-Africa Joint Research Program in Accra. Ebenezer Sabote filed the following report. Ghana has come under some criticism for dealing with the Chinese in various spheres and especially in its fight against Galamse. Some economists have however hailed the new $15 billion commitment government has secured with China, but emphasize the need for due diligence to ensure maximum economic benefits to the country. On the other hand, other people believe the country could be shortchanged by the global superpower. The China-Africa Joint Research and Exchange Program is a collaboration between the Institute of Democratic Governance, IDEC, and the Chinese Embassy under the theme Building Resilient Industries and Infrastructure for Economic Transformation in Africa, the Role of China. We apologize for the poor quality of sound. They will fix that and get that story right back to you. Moving on now, and the Ministry of Energy, Boachie Jaco, has, a uh, Minister of Energy, rather, Boachie Jaco, has expressed worry over the annual incidence of contaminated fuel at the Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company. At a press conference this afternoon, Mr. Boachie Jaco disclosed that BOST did not, however, require any permission to oversee and sell contaminated fuel. The minister also set up a committee led by Dr. Lawrence Dakwa, head of chemical engineering at the KNUST, to review the operations of BOST in a bid to prevent future contamination of fuel. There is a market for contaminated products that is quite separate and apart from the normal market for petroleum products. It is therefore not possible to sell contaminated products at pump prices since they require further processing before utilization. By practice, a company did not even have to be registered to buy contaminated products from BOST. In the particular case of Moving Pina, which bought the 5 million liters of contaminated products, it was a duly incorporated company under the company's code of Ghana at the time the transaction occurred. It is not the case that the MD of BOST owns the company that bought the products. And nine, it is also not true that the address of or phone number of Moving Pina is the same as that of the BOST MD. In the investigations carried out so far by the state security agencies and, and the MPA shows that on the basis of previous practice, there was no wrongdoing at BOST on the sale of the 5 million liters for the contaminated products. We wish to plead and advise that social media commentators will do all of us some good to check and cross-check some of these facts before making some of these allegations because they tend to cause unnecessary panic amongst petroleum product consumers. The ministry also refers to the statement by NPA, which was issued last week, assuring that the contaminated products have been fully accounted for and therefore have not been delivered to retail stations on the market. We wish to confirm that conf contaminated products are currently being quarantined at the various depots and do not pose any danger to public safety. The minister has, however, preferred some recommendations, including a review of the new legal regime on sale of contaminated fuel widespread publicity 
on the sale of contaminated fuel by way of competitive tenders against the expression of interest and improvement in petroleum standard operating procedures to prevent future occurrences. To this effect, the Ministry will start the implementation of the following recommendations, some of which have been pending from previous investigation reports on the sale and discharge of contaminated products. They include the following. Review and introduce new regulations on the sale and discharge of contaminated products. B. Codify and publish widely a competitive tender process based on transparent advertisement for the sale of products that have become contaminated. C. Implement improved standard operating procedures at all pet petroleum depots. The management, operations, and maintenance of the pipeline systems to prevent future occurrences of such accidents of product contamination. Let's uh, hit the phone lines and speak with the executive director of Kite Ishmael Ejekum Hene for some reactions uh, on that press conference that took place today. I, perhaps I want to start with uh, the minister saying that uh, BOSS did not need any legal backing to uh, oversee and sell contaminated fuel. Hello? Yes, hello, Mr. Ejaku, uh, Mr. Ejekum Hene, if you can hear me. I just wanted to pick your thoughts uh, on uh, the energy minister's, what he said this afternoon about BOST and the issue with the contaminated fuel. Now, he's saying that BOST did not need any legal backing to oversee and sell contaminated fuel. You agree with that? Um, no, not really. I mean... But I, I, just, I would have loved we, we put it in this right context. But we cannot say that they don't need any legal backing to sell contaminated fuel. They are fuel products, and the volumes that we're talking about are a lot. In, in the case of the one in question, is over five million liters. So there has to be some. It has to be done within the general regulatory framework that we have in this country and that is backed by law so i would disagree with him if he says that they don't need a legal framework to dispose of contaminated product but I, I i i'm not sure that's what i heard i thought he is recommending that there should be a legal regime within which some of these contaminated products could be disposed of okay so uh some of the recommendations that the minister made uh, this afternoon, saying that there has to be a review of a new uh, legal regime on the sale of contaminated fuel, widespread publicity on the sale of uh, contaminated fuel by way of competitive tender, and also expression of interest uh, and improvement in petroleum standards. Is that the way to go? Okay, I think um, in terms of what is the way to go, I'm not too sure until I've I've seen the full report with all the evidence that the BNI and the and the national security they, they have come up with because um, if truly they, they have they don't find any wrongdoing on the part of the managing director that's one issue but going forward I think basically what the minister is proposing is having a system in place to take out arbitrariness and get in some regime to be to regulate how uh, contaminated products are dealt with. But I guess his prime concern, if I heard what, he, if I understood what he said correctly, is to find out or come up with very good recommendations as to how as to how the contamination will not even arise in the first place. But I think it, it's proper that. Um, there has to be, it appears at the moment, TOR has been, it's a practice that they just, they don't go by any regulation and they'll get rid of the contaminated product. And it's also by, that's so sort of, you know, expression of interest. So I think if that's bound to happen, and I'm not saying that should be happening, but if it's going to happen, then there has to be a system in place that if somebody doesn't follow it, 
then we can hold that person uh, to account. I mean, I I also don't understand how anybody can be dealing with products, whether it's contaminated or off spec or whatever, uh, with our licenses. I think it, it is not enough for us to say that because they are off spec and they are going to use it for for other purposes. Uh, those I think those companies will have to definitely have some licenses and they have to come under the regulation of of MPA. But under the circumstances, if it's true that uh, all the uh, BNI report is exonerating the managing director, then I guess that's the only way forward to make sure that future occurrences are curtailed. And if they do happen as accidents, there is a proper and a very fair way of disposing of those products. All right, you heard Ishmael Ejikumahini, the executive director of Kite, sharing uh, some thoughts there. We want to move on now. The IMF has confirmed that it is in talks with government over the possibility of extending Ghana's program with the fund, but it was quick to add that the country is yet to send a formal request to the IMF ahead of this board meeting on Ghana later this month. George Raffi has more. According to a statement issued by the IMF in response to some questions sent by Joy Business, the fund noted that any extension would have to be made formally by the authorities. And the IMF understands these issues are under consideration. This is despite claims by sources close to government that it has agreed in principle to extend the IMF program to December 2018. But it now looks like that intent is yet to be formally sent to the IMF as the board prepares to meet later this month to consider this request and review Ghana's performance so far under the program. For some, the concern is that whether the formal request will be made on time so that it can be presented to the board later this month. This is because this could be the appropriate time that the request can be considered if Ghana really wants to extend the program. The IMF in a statement also admitted that the program targets, especially on how government can spend, would also have to be reviewed if the extension request is indeed granted. This is to ensure that Ghana will be able to achieve the set objectives at the end of the program. The fund also is of the view that it is prepared to give authorities more time to restore fiscal discipline as envisaged in the 2017 budget. In other news tonight, the Greek minister, Dr. Kutus Owusufi, has hinted of plans by government to engage banks to help secure funding for food and vegetable production. This is coming in the wake of the ban on food and vegetable exports to China and Europe over quality standards. Government is, however, engaging Chinese authorities while working with stakeholders to have the ban lifted by September when a team from the European Union visits the country for a review. The Greek Minister, Dr. Kutufi, says plans are also underway to find a lasting solution to the financing challenge of the exporters to the economy's benefit. You know that vegetables, fruits and vegetables are, are more delicate uh, products. So they have a different requirement in terms of the refrigeration and the handling. It's more expensive, it's the high end of the, of the market. So it needs uh, 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 specialist interventions of the private sector, of the kind that we've seen here, uh, exhibiting their goods and the people that we met this afternoon. Uh, we need to make sure, as they themselves said, that they are well uh, healed when it comes to financing requirements because their finance requirements are much higher than ordinary uh, uh, agricultural produce. And we'll be talking to the banks to ensure that once the ban is lifted, they will make facilities available for them to expand their activities so that whatever we've lost in the last two years, uh, we can catch up in a very short period of time to add to our portfolio of uh, agricultural exports to enhance uh, production and export earnings in this country. Meanwhile, President of the Consent Farmers Association, and now Obuadia Opambo Boateng, says there's more to the issue than just working with farmers to lift the ban. Yeah, the whole issue is like uh, we are not serious as a country because uh, I have not heard Cote d'Ivoire being banned for this, even Togo here being banned for this, but why Ghana? All because measures that are supposed to put in place are not there. 
talking about a uh, 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 cold room and and the other things where are they and one there was even an incident that a cold van was even given to the vegetable farmers just to use this cold van does no whereabout of the cold van as i'm speaking to you yeah I even reported the time that Honorable Fifi Kwete was the minister. I even confronted him with a program and even questioned someone that where is the code van. The person just said, Honorable this and that, and up to now. So it's like uh, Ghana is a country that everything that you see it on TV and other things are documented. When you talk about policies, we are very good, but implementation is weak, and we don't do it at all. Because how come all this thing is happening? Somebody did not do his job somewhere. That is why all these things are happening. And then talking about uh, standardability and other things, we don't have it here in this country, unless the export side. And uh, we are not together as one. That is another problem. That is what you have to check, because fine, everybody won't go into export. Everybody won't go into export. If we have a group, or let's say a, a, a group, in a way that if you want to maybe export your uh, mango or maybe tomato to this and that, you'll be tagged, let's say, from A, B. So that when your product goes to the place and then there's a problem, you will be notified that it was your product. But in Ghana, we don't have such a thing. I don't know. Because they are serious with, 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 with their farming activity. We can't compare Cote d'Ivoire to Ghana when it comes to a great. No. They are far ahead. Let's look at some of the things they're doing. There. Because they do a proper, they have a cold van which will carry the stuff from the farm to where the destination of the, of the thing. But here, we don't have it. You will see mangoes being packed on a truck. The other day, I saw even uh, 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 this uh, van, uh, caravan, taxi caravan, full of pepper for export. Just imagine. So it's like, uh, we, we need to do our things very well, because when you go to Kavua, Abidjan, they have the advance and other things that packed all these things. Very nice, code van and the rest. But let's ask Ghana, how many code van do we even have? How many storage facilities do we even have within the district? That maybe if you want to uh, harvest your, export your pepper and other things, you will just send it there and then the van will just come and pick it up. We don't have it. You're watching Business Live on the Join News channel. We are taking a short break. We'll have an update on the stocks right after this. Business Live today. Welcome back to the program. The Capital Market Thrive joined uh, last week's uh, trading and has started this week on a bullish note. Crude oil continues to dampen in price with a weakened demand, and the Ghanaian currency expected to record mixed uh, trends against the three major trading currencies. Joining me now is uh, market analyst Bertha to be got for some more updates. We want to begin with the city. Uh, first half of the year gone. How did the city fare? Well, the city has been, thank you very much, uh, first of all. The city has been very, very, um, not extremely stable, but has recorded some level of stability. We haven't experienced uh, much free falls. We started experiencing that in the early part of the year, where the city was clocking around 9% a year to the re um, return or depreciation. Uh, but as of now, it's not even up to 5%. It's around 4%, 3.5 to about 4% year-to-date depreciation. And we could say that uh, that's been very, very... Uh, good but we can still do more to actually curb that um, reduce or give the city more value on the market and one thing is we are expecting it to ex exhibit this um, stability in the short term on the market we're not expecting any free fall um, anytime soon with the city on the interbank market especially we're still going to have that volatile when I say volatile just like you saying and that makes reactions towards the major trading partners on the interbank market okay because so, uh, I mean we're reading that the crude oil continues to dampen in price I mean the what was going to be the impact of that? That's, <laughs> that is what we all, well, um, when crude oil prices are going down, mm. uh, it should tell you that um, well, the demand is less than the supply. And you can also actually re um, see that reflecting in the prices of crude oil on the Ghanaian market, uh, where they are a bit stable. We haven't had people complain so much about crude oil prices going up.
because it's been stable on the international market and it continues to fall i mean um i've not seen it go above uh, about 50 us dollars per barrel in a while uh usually it's around 45 42 43 like within that 45 average price on the international market and uh, that is good for us i mean we as consumers will always benefit when the prices are low we don't pay mm. much for it but the only thing that will make us pay more is the tax component that's being incorporated in our petroleum products here in ghana okay so going forward for the next half we expect the city to be stable sure to be stable in the short term we are expecting that stability on the interbank market like the forex market all right so let's let's talk about the the stocks uh, mm. we are coming back from a holiday yeah did we come back real good <laughs> well we came back real good uh we saw some huge volumes of shares trading but that um we can compare to what we saw last week monday uh, sorry last week tuesday where mm -hmm. we had over a million shares trading uh today we had about four hundred and forty eight thousand five hundred shares trading on the market at uh, one hundred forty three thousand four hundred forty seven ghana cities which is lower than what we experienced um a week today and if you look at the movers on the exchange we didn't see much equities moving on their previous share prices we had only three equities moving we had bopp which is actually um let me say <laughs> It's the equity like that appeals to many now on the market. It's doing so well, has returned more than hundred percent to investors. Maybe so for far. the sake of our listeners, you want to say why it's so attractive to Yes, it's attractive because um, right now there's a demand um, pressure on the equity on the stock market. And when the demand is very high, it pushes the price up. And um, it's uh, one of the equities that's returning positively. And you realize that on the commodities market, we've seen that stability. And that is also helping the company as a whole. It's, it's very, very important. And then you, you look at the performance of the equity for last year and the first quarter. It's been impressive. It's not something that um, you can say the company didn't do well. They did very well. And that it has also influenced on its um, attractiveness on the stock market apart from so it added a peso to its opening price yeah. to close at four cities 41 pesos per share mm. and then we also had ggbl ggbl lost uh, about four pesos today it lost four pesos to close at one cd 45 pesos per share and if you look at the market now today there's still shares that needs to be offloaded people are ready to sell off at one cd 45 pesos but these shares are outstanding People are not ready to, they don't have buyers, let me put it that way. Mm. So um, the equity is not very um, marketable now on the right, stock right market right. because of its um, financials as well. It hasn't done so well. And total also went up by a peso to close at two cities, 23 pesos per share. So in all, we have um, these equities moving on their share right. uh, previous share prices. Right. Yeah. Thanks very much indeed, Beth, that we got with the update on the stocks. Uh, great as always to see you. We want to move on now to our interview of the day. The finance ministry says it has no intention of scrapping the VAT flat rate scheme because it's aimed at addressing loopholes in tax collections from various businesses. Now, some manufacturing firms and retailers are said to have increased prices of goods and services as a result of the 3% increase. But Deputy Minister of Finance, Kweku Kwarten, says the tax should rather lead to a reduction in price of goods and services. Interview of the day. I do not think that this flat rate, uh, uh, flat VAT rate, should lead to any increases in prices at all. I have had worries that uh, this may be so. That there, there, there need not be. If you were in the past doing standard VAT, you paid 17.5 input VAT. And of course, when you sold, you collected output VAT from your customers. And then you set it off and you paid the margin to government. This time round, the 17.5% you have to collect from your consumers and pay to government is no more there. You are required to pay just 3%. So ordinarily, one would have expected that prices would drop by 14.5%, being the difference between 17.5 and 
But prices are not going to drop because the margin between 17.5% and 3% would be used to pay off or to offset what in the past was the input VAT for many of these wholesalers and retailers. It is revenue neutral. It should not lead to increment at all. In fact, if you look at the figures closely, it is government, if anything at all, that will lose some revenue because prices would, would, would have had to come down marginally and, um, and therefore there, there's no case at all whatsoever for prices to, to go up. We will continue engaging. Uh, thankfully, there are um, traders in the distributive trade who uh, are happy that this is not going to lead to increase in prices. And I am confident that in the end, the market, the market itself will respond to those who increase prices. Because uh, as I go around, it is not every retailer that has increased their price. Interview of the day. And that was your look at the stories making headlines in the world of business. My name is Daryl Kwa. As always, thanks for making a date. We are back same time tomorrow.